little beast I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna get out Hello there, my name is Stuart Ford from Stuart Ford Fitness and Martial Arts Instruction. Today's date is Sunday the 14th of June 2020 and this is the fourth and final week of my live streamed intro series Coach in a Box which is designed to introduce the various um, fitness and martial arts services which I provide and as an online version and from our little boxes that we're living in at the moment like I'm in at the moment so in a small area confined space in this lovely lockdown that we're in and uh, you have tuned in to Tai Chi in a Box and if you've not watched the other series which hopefully you have done Tai Chi in a Box is a traditional Chinese martial art uh, which is also used nowadays mostly as a, a health system so for improving all, all manners of, uh, of health aspects including stability, balance, uh, flexibility, um, range of move, movement which is also what we've already just said there of course, uh, mobility and um, managing stress levels and managing your energy flow to name but a few things. So there's a whole host of things that it does um, but uh, you really have to practice it for some time to, to, to really understand that and see what you can get from it. I say hopefully you've practiced some of the previous uh, sessions already because otherwise this is going to be a bit like uh, teaching you a foreign language and that way if you go back and see those then you'll be able to come along with this flow. So maybe have somebody else joining us today, um, I was expecting somebody but we'll, we'll see and we'll, we'll let them in as they come but otherwise we're going to get some music started for you and then we're going to crack on. So whoop, there's my telekinetic uh, music transmission thing that's going to get that set up for you and the music's starting. And so we're gonna, just going to come together first of all with our hands and feet and we're going to do our respect, which is right fist into left palm, and then pressing forwards like so. And then we come down. And we just stand like this in our Wuji posture for a moment. Relax. You can close your eyes. Full breath just to clear the diaphragm. And then just breathing relaxed and naturally. We're keeping the crown of the head lifted tall towards the ceiling or the sky. The chin's tucked in. So our body's strong through our core, but the limbs are relaxed, we're sitting nicely in the feet and just quieting ourselves down. Okay, we can step out, shoulder width, sit down into our posture, with our toes facing forward, so we're sitting down into our jam jong posture, just show you from the side there. And we're lifting our arms into this holding the bowl position. And jam jong, remember, means standing like a tree or a post. You can close your eyes. And you could sit down as low as you wanted to in these, but it really depends on your leg strength and the duration of time which you want to to wait here for. So this can be used as a strengthening exercise by itself. There's a system called Da Cheng Chuan which uses this as the basis of its martial art. And it'll stand like this for hours on end. And various other postures. Just quietening the mind, relaxing the body. So really that's the first thing that this we look at doing with this standing meditation. It's looking at the, the body posture, 
the relaxation in the shoulders, the back, the thighs, trying to let go of all the muscles except the ones that are needed. Which sounds obvious, but it's not what we tend to do. And you experience all kinds of different sensations, emotions, feelings as you're doing these for long periods of time. First of all, it's getting the body used to staying still and standing with a slight amount of awkwardness and the tension of the limbs, complaining about the knees being in a flex position, the shoulders complaining about the arms being lifted. Kind of learning to deal with that little bit of stress. Relax. Remember the head's pulled back, the chin's tucked in. We're scanning up and down the body. Checking that the posture is still there. Nothing's tensing up. If you feel tension in one area of the body, just focus on that for a, for a moment. Breathe into it if that helps, that, that feeling. And on the out breath, you can focus on that relaxing, melting away. Again, if you're by yourself, you can spend a lot longer doing this exercise. So we're just cupping the palms over the dantian. Palm over palm. And we're kind of focusing this energy that we've created, this vibration through the body, down to our, our dantian, our energy reservoir below the belly button, an inch or so inside the tummy is, is where it's generally noted, but you can just feel that for yourselves, where you think it is. Place the palms together, and rubbing the palms together slowly, just bringing our awareness there, and then we're going to take that awareness with the palms, contact to the face and the eyes, and then circle around slowly around the face, waking ourselves up, and then we're going to 
go over the head, open the eyes. Stimulating the face and the head, down the back of the head and neck, and then back together, the palms. Now we're going to place to the lower back and kidney area, and again just making that contact. And circle. top of the head, down, kind of brushing off the negative energy, down the back of the head and neck, smoothing it out, as well as your hair, down the outer arm, off the ring finger, changing, outside the ear, outer arm, off the ring finger. We can just step out to around shoulder width apart. And we're going to do our loosening exercises. We have three exercises. First of all, up, down, drop and turn. So we lift up, drop and turn, lift up, drop and turn. Well, we have Tessa coming in. I'm just going to let her in now. Okay, so here we are again. I've just let a uh, student in, Tessa. So we'll crack on again. We're on our Drop and rotation. So we're softening at the knees and sinking down. Standing up straight, when I say soften at the knees, that means just a little bend at the knees. But it's not like we're doing a real deep squat. We're just letting the knees go like we've been kicked in the back of the knee a little bit and a sudden drop down. If you've ever had that done to you, you might not have done, but <laughs> I have. And then Standing up to the centre, drop in and just return as we drop, so not the other way around, so return as we drop. And then the shoulders are just relaxing, and we don't end up using any arm muscles to lift the arms up, we're just doing that all by the body lift and fall and the spin. Okay, our next up, up into the air, throw down. So again, we have a little sink down with knees just let the ankles, knees and hips all flex naturally. You just drop down, we're not trying to keep the torso vertical here, which is a mistake a lot of people make with the martial arts. Again, all the, the ligaments are just having a sudden stretch, a little jolt in the joints, which loosens them off, but also strengthens them as well. As well as we're teaching the body to move as one unit. And the limbs to relax, which is very important. As in the, the limbs learn to follow the body rather than the body following the limbs. Follow the centre. Okay, and then we're on our third and most awkward one for a lot of people. We're keeping the legs dead straight now. And we're just rotating the hips 
and then the shoulder rotates with the hip, swings the arm out, and as we turn back again, the next one goes out and then we pulls the arm back. But it's using the, the hips here and the waist to, to send the arms forwards. How you use the hips, there's a kind of a, a push forward in the hip as well. A little swing forward, so it's a kind of arms swinging out. I find I can teach this with to people better doing a single side at a time. They struggle with each one just to get that feel to be able to throw one arm out straight. You can put as much vigour into it as you like. You can keep them soft. Okay, good. So let's relax down from that. Now then, uh, we had our, our walking patterns was the next thing that we went on to after our loosening. And obviously we say walking, we're staying on the spot because we're in this more confined space. So this is all adapted so that we're doing this in a, um, a couple of meters kind of square, not much more than that really, two to three meters square. And so our first one was our stepping pattern. So we can just show from the side there, or from the back to start. So our feet were hip width apart, and then check them to side on to show you the next bit. And I can turn out my right foot, sit down to the right, and step forwards with the left leg, putting about 40% to the front, 60% to the back. Come back up, and then we can change the other one. So toes out. And this is just the start of our movement here. So then when I carry on as if I was going to walk forwards, but I'm changing on the spot here. So, and again, it's just as applicable martial wise to be able to, to change the legs here. We sit back, turn out the toes, bring the foot back, and then step the other foot forwards. Sit back, turn out the toes, step back, other step forwards. If you had more space here, we could sit back, turn the toes, push forwards, step through and then you could carry on walking like this yeah. backwards step back and then adjust the, the front foot back to its original position so we've got this kind of backward stepping idea as well that we could do so that would be front foot comes back then adjust the front foot okay so here we're going forwards adjust back turn out the toes step back and forwards back turn out the toes back and forwards. So now toes back, forwards. And then we have our bow start. So we sit into the front leg. And now we just have a further range of motion to go back, bring back, step forwards, and then push into our bow start. Sit back, turn out the toes, back and forwards. So just get used to these movements that feel nice when you get the the smoothness of it, a nice dynamic movement. Yeah, and the, and the fact that we can we go, we're sitting relaxed into that posture again. This this idea of not tensing muscles that we don't want to use to hold us up. Yeah, only the muscles that we need to use, and that means. There's a certain amount of softness that happens with the rest of them. And then it also leads on to um, an ability to, to recycle your energy. Because if you're only using a certain amount of muscles, when they tire, you can then use some other muscles. And then you can go back to the previous ones again. So you get this constant changing over. And it's a way you'll find to kind of rejuvenate your, your energy. Okay, so there's our Sagittal, our forwards and back kind of idea. And then we have turning. So we have got our two turning methods, our 90 degrees-ish turning. And so to set ourselves up for this, if you come back to the back right-hand side of the room, so you can still see the monitor, obviously. And then we turn to the left corner, 
and then turn in about another, for me, about another metre away from the wall. <clears throat> so I'm facing this way. So have our feet out hip width apart. Turn out the right toes. Step forwards with the left foot. So then we have this posture, front toe straight, back foot 45 degrees. And then we're doing our pivot to the right. Bring the foot in slightly, heel down, adjust the weight to the front leg, and then pivot on the ball of the back foot to straighten that foot up. <clears throat> and then we go 90 degrees through our front face of our body to the left, pivot, come in slightly, heel down, and then pivot on the ball of the back foot. Turn to the right, bring the foot in a little, foot down, pivot on the ball of the left foot. Pivot to the left, foot in a little, down, pivot on the ball of the right. Pivot to the left, foot in a little, down, pivot on the ball of the left. So you have this slow transition towards this diagonal here. Pivot, in a little, down, and turn. So yeah, we've got movement going on here, but obviously every one of these that you do, it's a very small movement, so we wouldn't do this continuously in the form so much. This is just a practice. We still do this in a short amount of, or small amount of space. So, yeah. Okay, so there's our 90 degree turns. If we want to just do something within this kind of this remit of um, how flexible we are in our hips just to turn and open without having to adjust the feet first. But then we have our bigger turn, so if we want to do, and I'll do this facing the front to you this time. So I've got my left foot forwards, right foot back. So I'm in my bow stance here, and then I'm going to turn to 180 degrees. Now to do the, the 180 plus, so the bigger turns, we need to adjust back first and bring the front toes in and this gives us a much bigger scope of how we can turn. Put it on the ball of the right foot so the weight's now on the left. The foot comes around, down, and then you adjust the ball of the back foot. So we want to do this now. I'm going to be moving away from you. So every time we do our turn, we're going to go slightly backwards. So if I come close to the camera as I can, you can still see me on my feet. And then back into our, our stance here. So for you, you'd be um, far further away from the camera. So you want to go to the back wall. So you're going to move towards me as, as you go. So you're going to move towards your monitors. So you go further away. Okay, so then we sit back to the left, turn in the right, pivot on the ball of the left foot, just back. My foot has to arc around a certain amount so that when I place down and adjust the back foot to 45 again, we try and remember keep this fist to two width, fist width of distance between the heels. So now I sit back to the right, turning the left toes, pivot on the ball of the right, around, down, adjust the left foot. <clears throat> back to the left, adjust the right, turn, down, adjust the right foot. In, turn, out, down, just the left, back. Okay, so there's a 180 degree turn. So just these recapping. <clears throat> and then we, the next thing that we did was we did the very start part of the form, which is just the very first opening section um, called lifting hands or starting off, whatever you want to call it. It's just a very nice energy flow exercise to again get your this dynamic movement going on, this coordination happening between your body and your 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 mind, if you want. Okay, so I'll just show you from the side here. So we're going to step out, shoulder width, legs are straight. Just for this sake of this 24 pattern Tai Chi, the legs start straight in the beginning. Palms turn to face back. Then we could drive up from the feet. So you think of this kind of this energy wave coming up from the feet, up into the arms, extend, soften the elbows, and sitting down. And as I'm coming down, I've got this tilt forwards with the body as well. I'm not trying to stay up vertical, and I'm pushing down and forwards. 
and then again lifting, breathing in, open, extend with the fingers at shoulder height, down, and press. Remember we've got this feeling of lifting through water, that's what's sometimes called lifting water, I think. We have this drag feeling through our arms, but then really what we're doing is we are kind of feeling the atmosphere and getting in tune with that albeit through the the muscles and this control just mean that we have this slight amount of tension but contraction through the muscles that allows us to do things smoothly and we can lift up breathing in Extend, down, breathing out. Yeah, and the lower we went, the more we would kind of we'd just keep doing the same thing here if you wanted to. You could come up here and you could focus coming all the way down. And this is, uh, this is just Qigong really. There's loads of different exercises in Qigong, energy exercises that do all these kind of movements here. Yeah, maybe a, a lift up here, tilting backwards, opening. We can have all kinds of things like this. Okay, and they're all designed to strengthen the body in different ways, increase flexibility and, um, and energy flow, which they're great for. Okay, uh, then we're gonna go on to the form now. So we're gonna start with that, that beginning section there with um, starting off with lifting water. And then we're gonna try to carry on to the phase we got, or the stage we got last time, which was Repulse Monkey in the last session. Uh, so. That's what we're going to get going on to. So again, if you don't, if you haven't done the first three episodes or follow the first three episodes, then you really need to go back and start from the beginning. But otherwise, hopefully you have, and off we go. So feet together. So we're stepping out, shoulder width, palms turn to face back. Starting off, lifting and down. Holding the ball, hold the ball to your right. Step out 135 degrees around, so turn left into the left diagonal. And parting the horse's mane is our first maneuver. Left palm up, right palm down. Sit back, turning. Yeah, the further you stepped out, the deeper you're going to have to come back to be able to draw this foot back. Hold the ball to the left side, so we're now on the left foot and the right foot's touching down or hovering. Out to the right diagonal with the right foot. And the second parting of horse's mane. Sit back, turn out to the right. Step back with the right foot. Hold the ball on the right. So my left palm's turned up, right palm's turned down. Step out to that left diagonal and splitting apart. So there's our third parting the horse's mane. We then finish that flurry of movements with white crane spreads its wings. So we sway forwards onto the front foot, sway back to the back foot. Point the toes forwards, the right palms facing in, right arms up, left palms facing the floor with the wrist cocked. Brush knee. So we've got three brush knees. We turn into the left first. We've got five maneuvers to start here. One, two, swinging across, the right palms turned up. Three, the palms swing back to the back diagonal, right palm up, left palm down. Four, 
we prepare for our brush knee and strike palm. Yeah, so the left palm comes down, the right palm's facing the floor, hovering next to the ear. Forwards, and we're pushing straight from our shoulder here, pressing off from our back leg. Well, we've got this wide stance again, but now rather than going to this diagonal with my, my feeling, I'm coming straight forwards. And the left palm has done this brush knee part here, palm facing the floor. Okay, then we have two more of these to do. So there's another one. So we go back, turning out the toes again, and the body turning to the left, draw the foot back, turn to the left, left palm turns up, right palm swings across, out to our diagonal, step out to the right, the right palm presses down to the floor, left palm hovers next to the ear, and press forwards. So these second two only have four movements in them because we've started from a different position. Sit back, turn out the toes to the right, turn over the right palm, stepping back, swing the palms out, forwards to the diagonal, the left diagonal, and push. <clears throat> okay, if this helps, you showing you these from the, the front, because this is a, an awkward maneuver. So I started from white crane, spreads its wings. Now I'm gonna go, number one, turn, two, swing across, arms out to the side, three, out to the diagonal, forwards and push. Okay, and then do this from away as well, facing away. White cone spreads its wings, turn left, turn right, swing out, step out to the diagonal, forwards and push. Yeah, and then we would do the same to the other side. And then back the same to the other side again. So then that would set us up facing this original direction, so the way we should be facing, based on if we started the form facing away. So there's our third position, that's our third um, brush, brush knee, which brings us back to our, our right brush knee with the right hand pressing forwards, or brush left knee, that could confuse people. And then we're going to finish this section with our um, playing the, the lute. So we rock forwards, rock back, and then swing the arms around to the right side and then back to the left. And then the toes this time are pointing upwards. So let's just do this facing away from you. So we had our last brush knee position here, brushing the left knee. Rock forwards, rock back, swing back, and then playing the loop. And side here, forwards, back, and here. Okay, so from uh, play the loop, we then went on to our, our new section last time, which was Repulse Monkey. So we go open back to the right, turn to the right, palm turns up, front palm it just lets it drift and turn down. Adjust the foot back behind you slightly, the toes turning out ready to become our back foot and we're turning the hands over so my right hand turns to face down, my left hand's palms turn to face up. Then I step forwards with the right 
press away with the right hand, the left palm is now facing up. So we've just reversed the, the, the position from where we started. And then we do the same on the other side. So we have four of these repulse monkey. Back to the left, palm turned to face up. Step back with the right, the right palm turns up. Forwards with the left foot and left hand, the right palm's now turning facing up. Back to the right, step back with the left. forwards. So we just do a few few of these back to the left, right foot back, left foot forwards, back to the right, left foot back, right foot forwards, back to the left, right foot back, left foot forwards. And I'm just showing you this from the, uh, the front so this goes from our last position, which was playing the lute here. So we turn it back, step the left foot back, turn the palms, turn the palms, and then forwards. Turn, look back, step back with the right, palms are already turning. And we're just trying, we like with everything, the Tai Chi is, is trying to get all of the body to start and finish at the same time, making this unison and this yin and yang feeling where we're, we're building our strength and then clashing down a bit like it. Maybe you can see the, the, the waves that you're watching the sea, but that kind of builds up, builds up, builds up, and then crashes over with its peak and then pitters out again and then the next one maybe draws back and the next one starts. Um, so we've got that kind of feeling where we're, we're building the energy. Yin gradually travels into Yang to its peak and then turns back into Yin and descends again. So you can just kind of look at this hard and soft if you like and it grows and then... Okay, <clears throat> so I think that's where we got to last time and then so our last so if we if we do it again from so facing back to our correct direction so if we go now from playing the loop here open back to the right and we're going to do four of them now step back with the left forward to the right so that's first repulse monkey second back open Step back with the right, forward to the left. Open back, back with the left, forward to the right. Back to the left, step back with the right, forward to the left. And my baby girl just tried to push her way into the room there and force the, the light I've got down here on top of my, my little step up. And it's just Push that back again. <coughs> Her mother denied her, so she started crying. <laughs> She's very willful. <clears throat> okay, so there's comes back to our um, last repulse monkey position, and then we're going into this grasping the sparrow's tail, which is actually comprises of four four postures, or the four primary hand techniques as I know them. Pung, Lu, Ji and An, or ward off, roll back, press and push, I think this is the best English translation. So we go first of all then into ward off or Pung, so we draw the foot back, swing back around with the right hand, under with the left hand, and then come forward with the left into our our kind of preliminary holding the ball position or um, ward off position, sorry. The right palm is facing down towards the floor and the, the back of the forearm is facing forwards and I'm on the heel here. Then I press forward into my bow stance with the same movement and just kind of stretch apart with the two hands, the arm and the hand. So my feeling is my, my forearm here. And then we have 
roll back so we let the arms drift forwards sink down and swing the arms back together turn to face the front palm to wrist forwards and press so this is G or press so there's ward off roll back and press and then we finish with push forwards back sink and push now why exactly this was called grasping the sparrow's tail uh, I'm, I'm not sure you'd ever find a, a definite answer for that because you know, a lot of these people that designed these martial arts have, have passed away and, uh, and a lot of it was encoded in these names which is why they were called things like white ball spreads its mane and um, sorry white crane spreads its wings parting the horse's mane grasping the sparrow's tail um, because they didn't want people to know what the martial arts movements were apart from within the close families and communities that they used to train with so it was kept a lot behind these closed doors so I'll, I'll, you know, from my point of view what grasping the sparrow's tail it could be maybe that we've kind of got this trying to kind of grab out as we're going to this and trying to grab a hold of a imagine a bird trying to fly away um, it could just be the fact that we're, we're, we're saying it's kind of grasping a very difficult technique um, so who knows but that's where we are so there's the ward off roll back press and push yeah and all of these movements of course are very specific as, as how they're done um, and as, as, as far as the martial content goes of what what we're trying to achieve but we don't have the, the scope within these sessions to go through that um, but you can maybe see from the, the movements of my body at least where I'm going, it's not just that we're, we're pushing here, there, there's more to the movements here with this sink down, forwards and push. Uh, okay, so once we've done that on the, the left side, we then change and do this to the right side. So we do this turn, this 180 degree turn, like we practice here, so the toes turning here. Then I turn back to the left, hold the ball on the left side then step out into my holding the ball position or preliminary ward off position on the other side so left palm down right palm facing you and then pushing forwards pressing forwards with my forearm here leading the way so there's my ward off on the other side roll back comes here softens sits down draws back I turn to face the front, left palm to right wrist, forwards and press. Relax, sit back, sinking down, forwards and push. Okay, I'm just trying to show you this from the front with uh, the left side. So I would have finished that with my final repulse monkey the left hand forwards draw back to the right and here's if loosely holding the ball in this position here you can say then I step forwards and I'll still wait on the back leg forwards and press with the forearm roll back press push <laughs> okay uh, and this this technique is um, these four techniques they're the most important part of Tai Chi they're, they're like with many other martial arts systems they're kind of the basis, I think, of what the, the system, the fighting system was formed on. And it's, you know, obviously we, we're doing this further along in this form, but uh, the other 
forms, the longer forms, which were developed in, in the first place, more traditional forms, started with with these techniques, uh, or at least at least part of them. So there was a they came in first, and the other techniques would kind of grow. But the other techniques that we do, the other postures, all have the feelings of these these four um, movements in them, in one way or another. Okay, so uh, they, they, they've got descriptive names and they've also got um, uh, like a uh, martial name. So they've got different uh, different ways of explaining what they're doing. If you're, if you're thinking about how the energy is traveling, the direction of energy, and uh, and also just the posture and what it looks like, which is get, becomes confusing until you understand what the Tai Chi is really about. So I think it's probably a, a good a place as any to, to stop that. So we have the... Um, the grasping the spider's tail that we've got to, and uh, and that that probably takes us about uh, maybe a, a quarter to a third of the way through the form, through the through the entire form, which will take you about uh, five minutes or so to to actually go through the whole form, five six minutes if you're doing that in quite a smooth and and, uh, and dynamic movement if it's not too too jumpy and too paused. All right, and so uh, like I said, this is the, at the beginning, this is the, the last of the four weeks that I'm doing these live intros for, uh, the, these various uh, services which I provide. So hopefully, if you've been doing this one specifically, this has given you a bit of an insight into Tai Chi and, and given you a, an inkling to, to try and try to take it a bit further. You can always contact me to look at joining in with a, a class. I run a class on the Monday night at the moment, but. Um, this is during the lockdown, which is, is taken over all my, my sort of physical classes. Um, so that may change, um, but I'm always looking at look, looking at starting new ones, perhaps, wherever that, that, that's appropriate. I also can do small groups and, of course, one-to-one -one instruction if you want to take that any further. Um, and uh, you've got my website address, which is stuartfordfmai.co.uk, just on the bottom of your screen coming up there. Um, so if you're interested, you can go to there, go to the Coach in the Box section, which will lead you on to all of my online stuff. Or you can follow to my website through uh, through that website address as well, to my other website, shwaydao.co.uk, which will tell you all about the martial arts which I practice. Okay, so I hope you've uh, enjoyed the sessions. Um, so I, I have, for sure. And um, maybe I'll, look, I'll, I'll hear from one of you, or two of you in the future. Always pop a... Um, a subscription if you can as well on my YouTube channel which is always going to be helpful. So we can do the feet together, we're going to do the right fist into the left palm and then press forwards. Okay, down we come. And out. So bye for now. Thank you very much. Oh,